Hello and welcome to MarkLogic in the Cloud from MarkLogic University. In this episode, we'll talk about running MarkLogic on AWS. To follow along with this tutorial, you'll need a valid AWS account. In this video, you will learn about using MarkLogic on AWS, including using a CloudFormation template, pausing the node, and removing the node. There are many benefits to running MarkLogic in the cloud. This can include minimizing your downtime. By leveraging cloud technologies, you can have a geographically dispersed installation in case of disasters, without the cost of actually maintaining multiple physical locations. The cloud can also allow you to expand and contract your footprint, adding and removing nodes to match your current demands, without needing to purchase or be stuck with physical hardware. Realize that MarkLogic running in the cloud is still MarkLogic, with all the power and flexibility that comes with it. This means that moving from a local installation to the cloud or from one cloud provider to another can be done without a major overhaul. Using MarkLogic in this way can help to assure your cloud neutrality and be a step to minimizing your risk exposure from future technology shifts. The deployment of MarkLogic on AWS can be streamlined using a CloudFormation template to set up the MarkLogic AMIs and supporting resources. These templates also allow for a simple method to scale cluster capacity up and down to account for changes in demand. With AWS, you only pay for what you use. If you aren't using a cluster currently, for example a development cluster, you could pause the entire cluster, possibly lowering your operating costs. Before we can use the CloudFormation template, we'll need to create a role, a key pair for security, and accept a license agreement. Let's start by creating the role. We'll go into All Services and scroll down and under Security, Identity and Compliance, we'll click on IAM. Within there, we're going to go to Roles and click on the Create New Role button. We're looking to create an Amazon EC2 role and we want this role to be an administrator so let's go ahead and select that and then click on the next step button time to give our role a name we want to make sure that we remember this name for later use when we are setting up our template you can also give it a description if you so choose. Once complete, we can go ahead and see what that is actually doing for us with the administrator. If you click on the policy and then switch over to the JSON representation, you're going to see that inside of this particular policy that we have our two wildcards. So this will allow our role to do whatever we need it to do. Let's go ahead and close this window. And now I can click on my Create Role button. Wonderful. That role has been created. Once again, please make note of the role name as we will be needing that later on. With our role created, it's time to create our key pair. This will be used to access the system after it has been stood up. So we're going to go into our all services from our AWS console. And under compute, we're going to go into EC2. On the left, under network and security, you can see key pairs. And from there, we will click the button for creating a key pair. Once we have supplied a name, once again, note the name as we will need this when we stand up our stack. 
also make sure you are doing this in the correct location. Whatever location you set this up in has to line up with the location where you're actually going to stand up your systems. The last thing we need to do before we stand up our stack is we do need to go and accept the software license agreement. Easiest way to do this is to start at our developer products site for AWS and to go from that link into the AWS marketplace. We will go ahead and click on the continue button and this will let us go in and accept the software terms so that we will then be subscribed to the MarkLogic developer AMI. If we didn't do this, the screens would be blank when we go to actually try and use the AMI. Okay, so we've accepted that. We can go ahead and close and go back to the product page. And notice that the template URL is there. You can download the template, or we can just click on the button, and it will take us right into our cloud formation at AWS. So I've already logged in. I didn't have to go through any sort of credentialing. And you can see that our template URL is already in position. Now it's just a matter of playing fill in the blanks. We can go and rename our stack if we so desire. We're going to supply the username and password for the admin account within MarkLogic. And here is where that IAM role has to be put in place. Remember, I asked you to make note of that when we created the role a little while ago. Once the role is set, we can set our instance type. Now, the different instance types will have different capabilities when it comes to processors and RAM and such. Full listing is in the documentation and available from AWS. I'm going to go ahead and select M3 Medium. Next, we need to specify our key name. This is for our key pair. And again, you want to make sure that our locations line up. So if you create it in California, then we should be using California here when we create our stack. The key pair is location-based. It is not global. The role is global. Other options here include supplying license details. We're not going to worry. That's We'll do bring your own. We can specify the SNS for AWS if you wanted to, to have our message queue. We want our nodes to be stood up and working, so we're going to leave the nodes as one. We'd put that to zero to turn them off, and we'll see that a little bit later on. Our volume size at 10 gigs will be just fine. All we need to do is set our zone. If this was a cluster, you'd actually have multiple zones to set, one for each node. To keep yourself organized, you can supply tags. For example, we can go in here and supply a name. And this will be leveraged a little bit later on in a separate display. But you can have tags for whatever makes sense for your facility to keep track of which stack is which. Do make sure you hit that plus button so it does get added. We can confirm that all of our settings look good. In this case, they do. And so we can go ahead and create. Now, your mileage may vary. The speed at which it will refresh will vary from system to system and what the demands of the system are at that moment. Here you can see that it has the create in progress. And this may take a few minutes. What we're waiting to see is the, the creation has been completed. There we go. Now once the create has been completed, we can go down to our outputs. And really you want to give it 5 or 10 minutes to fully boot up. But you'll be able to click on our URL here, and it will go ahead and launch our admin interface for our system. I'll use the credentials that I created when I specified my template and stand up the stack. 
and you can see I've got the admin interface. I now have a working MarkLogic system. And this isn't the only interface that I have access to. All of our standard interfaces are here for you. For example, I can go and I can switch over to port 8002 if I wanted to. And once I log in with those same admin credentials, you can see that we're into our configuration manager. And maybe I want to go over to the query console. That too is available to me over on our port 8000. So as you can see, we now have a fully functioning MarkLogic system that looks and feels much like it does as if we had installed it local, but we have the benefit of it being in the cloud. So let's pretend that we have now decided that we are done with this cluster, that we are going to put it aside, put it on the shelf. We're not looking to delete it, we just want to stop using it for a while. And so what we can do is we can go and update our stack. The idea is that we're going to hibernate some of this and hopefully mitigate some of the costs. Now you can go and you need to start with a baseline. So we're going to use our same template that we started with. The easiest way to get this is to go back over to the product page and to copy that URL. We'll go back to our AWS page and we will paste it in and that will give us our starting point. We'll go ahead and we will click on our next button. Notice that almost everything is filled in and the admin password is actually grayed out. That's been set. What we're looking to adjust is down where it says nodes. We're not looking to initialize this time. We want to shut down or hibernate. This will allow the nodes to shut down, but mean that we will not release the storage associated with them. If we wanted to go and add more tags, we could, maybe to specify what we were doing. So the system is going to do a quick check to make sure that the changes seem legitimate. Once we are comfortable with that idea, we can go ahead and hit the update button. We'll again see our status and we're going from an update in progress. We want to see that complete again. And there we go. We've now put that cluster into a hibernate state. So far we have stood up a stack. We have hibernated the nodes in the stack. Let's say that we now want to clean up after ourselves and actually delete a stack. So we can do this from our actions. And you will get a normal sort of warning saying, are you sure that you want to delete? and we can say yes and our delete is now in progress once again it's going to take a little bit of time in order to complete once it is done if this was the only stack you had this is going to revert back to that opening screen where we had the ability to create stacks and what have you if you had multiple stacks in place you'd remain in this sort of screen this table type affair. And there we go. Our stack has been deleted. You can learn more about MarkLogic in the cloud at docs.marklogic.com. Also you can refer to the AWS product page at developer.marklogic.com.
In this episode, you learned about using MarkLogic on AWS, including using a CloudFormation template, pausing the node, and removing the node. To get MarkLogic, download it from developer.marklogic.com. Get more training by visiting marklogic.com slash training. Also, a complete selection of on-demand topics is available at mlu.marklogic.com slash on-demand. Or download the MarkLogic mobile app, available on both the Apple App Store and Google Play. And don't forget to show off what you've learned. Add MarkLogic as a skill on your LinkedIn profile today. Thank you for watching this MarkLogic University on-demand tutorial.